So let's start with a little exercise. All Uber users, please raise your hands. Keep your hands up. Imagine you leave today's conference and you decide to Uber. The app tells you the waiting time. How long are you willing to wait? Keep your hand up if you're willing to wait for one minute. Keep your hand up if you're willing to wait for five minutes. Eight. 10, 15. That's crazy. Half of you put your hands down when I said eight minutes. Would you have waited in the past before that app, this app existed? Of course you would have. You probably wouldn't even have been ready for the car by the time it arrived. But don't worry, you're not the only ones. Uber published a series of graphs last year showing people's willingness to wait for an Uber, how this changed over time, and how it differs from city to city. You see the space in between those two lines shows the shifting patience. So this is true for one city, but the exact same pattern applies to nine other cities out there. So basically, the longer Uber has been in a city, the less willing to wait for a car everyone becomes. So Uber realized they have to constantly raise their bar. But this is not a completely new insight. It was actually nailed years and years ago by one of my favorite trend spotters, Louis C.K. Do you feel that we now, in the 21st century, we take technology for granted? Well, yeah, because now we live in an, in an amazing, amazing world, and it's wasted on the, on the crappiest generation of just spoiled idiots <laughs> that don't care, because this is what people are like now. They got their phone, and they're like, ugh, it won't... Give it a second! <laughs> give, it's going to space! <laughs> Can you give it a second to get back from space? Is the speed of light too slow? I was, on a, I was on an airplane and there was internet, high speed internet on the airplane. That's yes. the newest thing that I know exists. And I'm sitting on the plane and they go, open up your laptop, you can go on the internet. And it's fast and I'm watching YouTube clips. It's am I'm in an airplane. And then it breaks down. And they apologize, the internet's not working. The guy next to me goes, this is bull****. <laughs> like how quickly the world owes him something. Yes he knew existed only 10 seconds ago. Right. Sounds familiar? Well, Uber and the internet speed are just two examples. But think about how other brands are changing your expectations every day. Just a few examples. Airbnb is changing your expectations from travel towards a more authentic and affordable one. Nice Cream FM is changing your expectations from listening to music, going beyond just an on your online audio stream towards a community of people, events, and places that are actually worth being promoted. And Tesla, who would have ever thought that an electric car can also be really sexy to drive? So why did we do this exercise? Because I wanted you all to experience what my job looks like. At trend watching, we look at groundbreaking innovations and we ask ourselves what are the expectations these innovations trigger. And then we spot patterns, and that's what we define how we define trends. And as a trend watcher, people always expect me to know what's next. Yeah, no pressure. In the workshops and presentations I run with companies all over the world, I moderate their innovation process and I help them stay ahead of time and ahead of competition by applying trends to their business. And for them, and I'm sure for many of you, business today looks a little bit like this. A constant avalanche of new products, services and experiences flooding into the market every hour, every minute, every second. Meanwhile, customers' expectations cycle ever higher. It's overwhelming. How can a brand keep up with all this? In this context, business success boils down to one key question. What will your customers want next? 
So every CEO, every marketeer, every startup founder is obsessed or should be obsessed with the question of where are customers headed. But it's a difficult question to answer. One traditional approach, ask customers what they want. Questionnaires, panels, focus groups. But most of the times, the difference between what people say they want and what they really want is light years apart. OK, so forget about asking them. How about watching them? Well, this kind of ethnographic field work can really give you deep insights, but it's hard, it's slow, and it's very expensive. But wait, problem solved. We have big data. But while data is great at optimizing what you're already doing, it can rarely bring you insights about something that is truly new. So what's the answer? Well, we've been hard at work last year, tearing apart what we do, why we do it, and we put everything in a book. And in this process, we realized that our methodology was based on a powerful counterintuitive truth. And if there is a secret to customer centricity, then it's this. To anticipate what people will want next, you have to stop looking at customers and start looking at businesses, at those innovations that people are lavishing their attention on. To get to the heart of this sentence, it really pays off to look at how a trend comes into it existence. Trends emerge as innovators address people's basic human needs and wants in novel ways. I know. There's a lot in this sentence already, so I'm going to unpack it for you, OK? What our model says is that on the one side, you have change, technological, societal, economical change. You can't stop it, no matter what you do. On the other hand, you have human basic needs. You know them. Connectivity, status, safety, self-improvement. These rarely, if ever, change. At the beginning of last year, in North America, 100 million hours of how-to videos were watched. What do you think was the number one how-to question being addressed? It was how to kiss. So we have this amazing, amazing technology at hand, you know, only 10 years or so old, and we still use it to answer some of the most fundamental questions out there. So yes, new technologies, innovations hitting us every day, but they don't change us. They just address our needs in new and special ways. So what changes? Because when it comes to trends and to innovation, it's all about the change. The only thing that changes are our expectations. There's a constant tension, a gap, in between what is currently available and what we really want. And this gap is the secret to spotting trends, and it's the key to innovating. This means that if you are innovating around people's basic needs and you forget to look about what is changing, then you're just going to create more of the same. If everything you're thinking about is what is changing out there and you forget about people's basic needs, you're just going to create fads and novelties. So what you're aiming for is this sweet spot, the place where needs overlap with change and create new expectations. In other words, if you track trends, this will help you meet and surpass customers' rapidly changing expectations, because trends are nothing more than patterns in customers' expectations. Now, the most exciting part about expectations is the fact that they travel between industries, between regions, and between demographics. Let's stick to Uber and transportation, because we started out the day with Uber. 
Uber changed the way we travel across cities all over the world. And it created this expectation of one-touch service. You click it, your car is there in a few minutes. But this expectation traveled to other industries as well. Dari is a French electronics retailer. They created this button. You stick it to your fridge. Anytime you have a problem with any of your appliances, you just click it, and someone from Dari calls you back. So it's one-touch customer service. Amazon Dash. You click, you order more of your diapers, detergent, or whatever you have on your pre-selected shopping list. Mine caters to a seven-month-old baby. In Indonesia, you can click for a cleaning service, you can click for a massage, you can push for pizza, and in New York, you can even click for a lawyer. So that's expectation transfer in action. This is how it applies to products and services. But it also applies to less tangible aspects of consumerism, like brand behavior or brand, brand attitude. I'll give you an example of that. This trend you're looking at is insider trading. This is about companies making changes to their internal culture and then going public with them, shouting out about those positive changes. And this trend plays into the expectation that consumers today care much more about how companies treat their employees and how ethical they are. And I'll show you a few examples of how brands from different regions played into this expectation and therefore contributed to creating this trend. Ray is a, an outdoor apparel retailer in the US. They decided to close their doors on the most profitable day of the year for them, last year, the Black Friday. So they sent their employees and their customers to spend the day outside, because that's what they stand for as a brand. So purpose went beyond profit. In London, we all know, and some of us even experienced, um, the city's high cost of living. Starbucks gives any employee, any barista that has been with them for at least one year, an interest-free loan to use as a deposit for rented accommodation. And in the Emirates, Freedom Pizza decorated their um, motorcycle drivers' hel helmets with pictures of their loved ones to remind them and other people in traffic that no delivery goes beyond safety. So the key takeaway from this expectation transfer is this. And if there's one thing I want you to remember from my presentation today, it's this. Your customers' expectations are set outside your industry. So the real question you should all be asking yourself is, who are you really competing against? Because you're not only competing against the main competitors of your industry, but you are equally competing against global brands that set standards and customers' expectations, whether that's um, Apple for design, Singapore Airlines for customer service, or Patagonia for sustainability. Once a certain level of quality and service is reached in one industry, people will expect exactly the same thing from yours. Now I want to address a question that might be on your heads. What if these innovations, what if some of the innovations you're showing me will fail? How will I know if they will succeed? Well, when it comes to expectations, success or failure is not the point. And to make this clear, I'm going to show you three phones. The black phone. This is covered by end-to-end -end encryption. You lose it, no, none of the data that you exchange through it can be read by anyone. Then we have the fair phone. Everything that is unfair about the phones you have in your pockets, this phone does it right. So it's highly recyclable, it's made with conflict-free minerals, and it also has a modular design, so if it breaks, you can open it and repair it yourself. 
And the last one is Project Ara. In the meantime, this project was canceled, but check the video. I'm not saying that any of these phones will be in everyone's pockets next year. But what I'm saying is that the expectations these phones trigger are already in everyone's heads. How many of you broke your phone screens, your smartphone screens? You've only seen this video 10 seconds ago. I bet you're already asking yourselves, how come it isn't that easy for me to just slide a new one in and I have to send it, pay a lot of money, and it takes ages? So expectations spread very fast. Therefore, the success or failure of an individual innovation doesn't matter. What matters are the expectations it triggers. So now you know the secret. To anticipate what people will want next, you need to stop looking at customers and start looking at businesses. Ask yourselves, what are the expectations that these innovations trigger? And then take them and embed them into your new offer to stay ahead of time. So we started out the talk by feeling overwhelmed by this amount of products, services, and experiences that flood the market. But I think now you know what you need to do to turn this overwhelming amount of, of new innovations into opportunities for your business. All you need to do is pay attention to what's going on right now, track trends, and the future will no longer take you by surprise. Mulțumesc! <laughs>